Ready to go? Let's go. Whoa! Hi, I'm John. Hi, I'm Bert. This is for story time. It's for story time because it's a September wrap up, so yeah. not, nothing scary about it. Well, might have been one or two scary in mine. Oh, yeah, same. But, same. <laughs> but not scary overall. Yeah, how is everyone? Um, it's Sunday here. It's very rainy. We've both been out this morning. Do our various things, and we are in all day now. We don't have to do anything else. Nothing else. We've eaten tempeh that Bert made. Video coming up. Oh yeah. About how to make tempeh. Yeah, I'm sure it's, it's going to take off. We're all waiting. Yeah. You just need three days. That's all you need. <laughs> anyway, September wrap up. Yeah. So I made ten. One, I kind of finished October the 1st, but I'm putting it in anyway, Bertie, is that Yeah, fine? I didn't uh, have a, a massive reading month. I've been watching so many films. I read seven. Okay, well, that's pretty good. And um, look, quite a few of mine from the library, so I don't have all of them, so we might have to okay. insert well, right. pictures. Okay, we can do that. Oh, yeah, you okay. Yeah. Should I start? You go first. So, my first book I read of the month, which feels like I read it so long ago, um, was Mine Spread Out on the Ground by Alicia Elliott, and I already read this one with Mercedes and Charlotte from Tide Mom, which I to read. It's a book of essays written by an Indigenous Canadian author. Um, I, I thought I was going to love it. I thought it was going to be five stars for me. It ended up being four stars, so I did really, really enjoy it, but it didn't have that little thing that kind of made it my favourite book ever. Mm. Um, they're essays, and I think maybe that's part of why I wasn't like completely in love with it. They're... Um, Essays, which a lot of them are personal essays, so lots of quite traumatic stuff that, have ha that has happened to her through her childhood. But then there were some essays which were a bit more just on different themes. And I, I wonder if maybe I would have preferred like a whole, like a memoir, really. Okay, or, rather than essays. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, there was something anyway that didn't quite 100% mm. work for me, although I did really like it. And I really, you know, there was lots of really interesting things yeah. and it's a really important book. Um, lots, of... lots of tags so I think that was more because I was buddy reading and little bits to kind of you know mm. talking points mm -hmm. with the girls Yeah. Um, there was a couple of things I guess that I didn't enjoy so then sometimes that sort of sours things for me what were you going to say? what were the things you didn't enjoy? Right. was there something, something about modern art? Did something about modern art yeah <laughs> we don't tolerate that not... I don't like that kind of mocking I don't like mocking the term modern, modern art. art no yeah. It's contemporary art. Contemporary art. Isn't it? Um, so, contemporary art, lads. Yeah, the two. And I, there's one, um, yeah, there was one bit about contemporary art. There was another bit where she talks, does like a chapter on photography and kind of Susan Sontag and photography. And I think that maybe, kind of like the whole book, like I felt with that essay, there was nothing new in it for me. And yeah. I, I feel that maybe... That is for a lot of it. Not that I necessarily know everything she's talked about, but it didn't make me think in a different way, which I think is something that makes a five-star book. I pretty much yeah. agreed with everything she said other than about the modern art, the contemporary yeah. art. So I agreed with it all, but I didn't find that thing of like, oh, I want to find out more about this, or do you know what I mean? Yeah. Didn't kind of get my brain fizzing. It was more like, yeah, you're right, you're right. It's not a, it's not a time to discuss what essays are, I guess, is oh. it? <laughs> Anyway, well, that's an essay. That's maybe an ongoing <laughs> series we can we can do. So yes, it was yeah. it was good, yeah. really interesting. Um, but I didn't quite like it as much as I thought I was going to like it. Your turn. Um, it seems like ages ago, doesn't it? The beginning. I know September. that felt like months. Time has slowed down. <laughs> um, I read Clay's Ark by Octavia Butler. Um, I bought this second hand in uh, Trap Mark in Cardiff. Um, I was really looking for anything by Octavia Butler, uh, so I was pleased to have found this in town. This You are really, Bert is really good at manifesting. <laughs> <laughs> because he was like, I want to go to a drug mark and mm. I want to get an Octavia Butler. Mm. And I said, well, they never have, you know, they don't usually have stuff like They've that. They've never had one before. And then as soon as he said that, you went there and there, there one was. Yeah, if you, you guys need anything, <laughs> let me know. Um, so, Clay's Ark... Um, it's difficult with Octavia Butler because there's so many books in various series and whether and, and it's knowing which book and which order to read them in. So this is part of the uh, Patternist, I think, 
series, it's called. Um, and by all accounts, the Patanis series was written, so chronologically, it's written backwards. So technically, you would read the latest one first and go and you could go backwards from there or you could read it in the order that they were originally released um, and kind of work the story backwards um, luckily this one I had no idea what it was when I got it is a prequel to that series so it works completely well as a as standalone I'm sure it works even better once you're familiar with what happens after this and you know the whole sort of world that she she's created but I really enjoyed it as a standalone I kind of feel like I can now delve into the rest of the series if I want to, which I do want to read more of hers after reading this. I really enjoyed it. I think it was well written. Um, it's just a good sort of dystopian um, tale. It felt quite sort of prescient at the moment because it is about a uh, like a, a virus type thing mm. that is going around um, in this sort of dystopian earth. Um, and um, yeah, I think that it sort of brings up lots of um, interesting um philosophical questions um about what makes us human so yeah really interesting enjoyed it someone helped you with the order of that was it ariel from she wants the diction but ariel was kind enough to <laughs> help me out of that one thank you um i then read sharp objects by gillian flynn um i have previously read what's a gone girl is that what it's called yeah um which i thought was okay um, I think I preferred this one, um, but still didn't think it was amazing. These are, so these were a few years old. This one is from 2000, 2006. Mm. So that's quite old, I feel. These days. <laughs> these days, time is, yeah, yeah catching or, up with books, isn't it? <laughs> in that, yeah, in that sense of the way she writes about women as a woman, I find quite strange. Like, it mm. feels quite misogynistic. And I'm kind of interested in if she has something, um, you know, comes out soon, if that changes. Um, the feel of this was really good. I really liked the main character, even though she said that the stuff. Mm -hmm. I love the main character. And um, there is stuff about self-harm in it. And I wasn't sure how convincing, although that seems weird, but if you've mm -hmm. read it, you'll know the self-harm bits were. I will tell you about them afterwards. Um, uh, but I liked her as a character. She's kind of damaged and she does things which aren't great. Right. And I quite like that. Yeah. The um, who done it aspect, though, is like, well, yeah, you know who's done it. Well, Sean's good at plot. So well, I think it was really you obvious. Might not know. <laughs> it was really I might obvious. Not know. So the ending was like a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But I liked the character, I liked the kind of feel of it. Okay, similarly, uh, I, re <laughs> I read Life and Lasagna by, uh, by um, Jim Davis. This is a Garfield comic. Um, so the caretaker at the school where I do the school crossing at, I think noticed me just kind of standing there quietly um, without much to do one day. And he, I guess, found this um, book in the school. Um, actually, I mean, initially here it says that it was... Um, owned by a, a girl in Merseyside, um, and for Xmas 1987, she's, she's written in this one. Um, but yeah, so he brought me out this as reading material while I was kind of waiting for the school gates to open before any of the parents arrived. And I was really grateful because I had discussed with him previously <laughs> how much I like Garfield. Um, and I'd read all of these when I was very little, and I pretty much remembered every single comic strip in, in this. So they're all just kind of like little free, they, they would have like maybe been in the newspapers, I don't know, kind of like they just all stand alone as like the free panels is one joke kind of thing. It's really good. I like Garfield. He's kind of, you know, grumpy and he's the one, one, at one point he says, it's a beautiful day outside. He says, well, today I might even say that I'm glad to be awake. You like lasagna as well? I do you? like lasagna. I yeah. do like cats. So. Yeah. So it's a really good combination for yeah. you. I think this is a yeah, this is a mid eighties, mid to late eighties one, uh, nineteen eighty six, very very good. Yay! Yeah. I then read Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty, which I don't have because it's from the library, and that um, so obviously she's the Ask a Mortician on YouTube. Um, I've been watching a lot of Ask a Mortician 
in lockdown. Mm. Um, yeah, I loved them. And then telling me all about and them. Then, I yeah. want to go for our walks. Yeah. About yeah. Different kinds of death. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, I really liked this one because it kind of combined, like, memoir of her starting off in the kind of uh, death business and the funeral business. So it combined that memoir with sort of, um, sort of stuff about death. Uh, in general or um yeah her stories of like going to get bodies and stuff she's death positive yeah she's amazing i do really um enjoy her and she's got some great ted talk as well Mm. there's like other people she talks about how other people in the funeral industry don't like her because she's like you know talking about death and stuff and she's also trying to make it um you know so you don't have to spend loads of money because that's a lot of the, it, yeah. it's i think america in here is very different um yeah. she's trying to get so that you don't have to be embalmed as well people don't people. know that you don't have to spend all this money yeah necessarily on... and in the uk there's there isn't really embalming so hmm. and that's i think what's the big cost yeah anyway i really love i really like that don't one. embalm me no one ain't no one gonna you. embalm me no. no what do you want to happen i don't mind really whatever you think <laughs> Um, next up, I read The Only Good Indians yes. by Stephen Graham Jones. This was a buddy read with Alicia, um, and we both absolutely loved it. Um, oh, this is just so good. It's so unexpected. It's um, unexpectedly emotional, um, despite you not necessarily getting to know the characters, particularly you know, for, for too long or for too well without wanting to sort of give anything away. And um, not, you like, feel attached to everyone in this book. Yeah, and uh, they're not, like, likeable characters as such no, either, are they? No, And it just has a, a loads to say. I mean, first and foremost, it's just a really good horror story, really good horror premise. Um, but it has loads to say about um, feeling disconnected from your sort of indigenous roots, I guess, the characters in this, that sort of um, generation of indigenous, indigenous Americans that... Uh, are trying to uphold the customs and traditions of their culture, but feel kind of a bit like inauthentic doing that. There's lots of talk about that in there. Um, it's got some very intense uh, scenes um, and basketball, basketball, um, the uh, sweat lodge. Mm. Um, it's just great. Um, Sean says she will never see a ceiling fan in the same way again. No, the ceiling fan. <laughs> I, I, that beginning bit, yeah. I thought was really good. Mm. I also feel like you don't have to th- think that you... If you don't read horror, still read it, because it, it works on like lots of levels. And it's not... If you think you're scared of horror, it's not too scary, I don't think, in that sense. What do you reckon? I, uh, yeah, I'd agree. I think like with any... any like, I, I think genre is kind of a bit ridiculous anyway mm. and I think any good book in any genre is readable for everyone like so this is just another example of that I think like obviously I think it's not Stephen King um it's got a, a very kind of wide reaching kind of uh, uh subject and I think it's yeah it just feels it feels like a it was really unexpected it felt like it's just a really accomplished novel to me um, yeah but for as someone that really really likes horror um that was just a bonus um because it did it did read as a horror novel just a really sort of a particularly interesting and well well sort of crafted one um but yeah loved it yes. one, one of the best books i've read this year me too yeah yeah um the next one i read was the white road by sarah lotz which i read because alicia Felicia reed talked about it and it's a kind of a horror-y thriller type book. Yeah. Um, and it's about this guy who kind of, he's called Simon. And it's sort of set like a few years ago, but he does like stuff that him and his friend are trying to get kind of like go viral with like videos about kind of grim stuff. So they've heard that there's some dead bodies in this cave that are stuck in the cave. And um, oh, yeah, okay. And um, he, he's decided he's going to go. He wants to go down this cave and film the dead bodies. So um, the beginning starts with him going into this um, cave, and that beginning bit, like I even can feel my heart starting to go a little bit well, you're faster. Not good caves, I'm right. quite claustrophobic. <laughs> <laughs> so the beginning not bit where they go in, not a fan of caves. 
caves. No, they go into no. the caves. So the reason these people have died Remember in there. Remember when you had to go into the the uh, cave for was it a work thing? There was like we were going into like a mine oh, to, a mine? for work, and yeah. I was just like, yeah, I'm not going in there. Yeah, yeah. So I just yeah. yeah. Oh, should I carry on? Carry on. So. Um, the, yeah, the reason the dead bodies are in there is because they've gone into this cave and if it rains too much, you get stuck in there and then you're dead. Um, I do love the um, sort of vlogger trope that's yeah, come up recently. Yeah. You, you kind of don't really mind if things happen to them. <laughs> the writer, though, she um, went into a cave for uh, research. She went caving for research. Thank you. She went caving for research and I watched that video that is on YouTube oh, I will really? link it and I watched that and that was just like so grim like crawling through these like you have to first of all you have to go down this just this t this kind of tube so it's just mm. like as much as you could just fit down right. there's bits where you're kind of crawling through and then yeah so is that a recommendation for the book oh. <laughs> if you go caving yeah if, no, you're, in, if no, you're into enclosed spaces yeah yeah no spoilers, but after the cave, so you feel that's where the book is, but actually that's just a short bit at the beginning. After right. the caving, he then climbed Everest. Right. Oh yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah. So there's lots on Everest. Then I got, and it's all a, so. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> this is too much. No, this no. Is too long. Ultimately, I think I gave this book three stars. Mm -hmm. I like really enjoyed it, but I felt like the, those first two bits were really good, and then I kind of. I, it drifted a bit t towards the end for me, right. which happens a lot. So yeah. maybe it's me. yeah. But then what happened to you? Oh yeah. So when he's there's all this stuff about climbing Everest, which is like grim, and it's <laughs> <laughs> and there's another layer of story. And I thought it was really well done. Mm. Loads of research. Mm. I felt I was there in that cave and on Everest. Yeah. He also talks about the third man thing, and this mm. is kind of where the sort of more of the horror comes in. Um, that that there's this thing when you're in a, in danger and you feel like maybe you're going to die and i think it's happened a lot to kind of mountaineers and stuff is that um you see like you see someone who becomes like a guiding force and helps you out and they've used that trope but they've made the person kind of evil right so anyway that it's was that good, good idea yeah, yeah yeah there was lots of good things i read yeah. it in like two days i was yeah. like hooked yeah um then yeah then i got out, out got loads of books about mountaineering at the library Sam was briefly in, really into mountaineering um, to the point where i had to get my library card activated um to just to fill it up we with mountaineering yet, books though. no I've we've really had got, one i've got one about about the third man kind of yeah. thing which yeah. sounds really interesting isn't it mm. yeah so yeah it was fun it was really quick to read yeah. um i enjoyed the first half the right. most yeah it's really claustrophobic Let's never go up Everest. Yeah, we, should we make a, a deal now? Didn't we, could, I did, we couldn't afford it anyway. I ended up looking up how much it would oh, cost, yeah. and it's, it's like such a wealthy person's yeah. hobby. Sorry, Bob, is that too long? No, that's fine. Perfect then. <laughs> um, my next read was "Mr. Bowling Buys a Newspaper" uh, by Donald Henderson. Oh, this was so good as well. This is from 1943, um, and. Uh, I guess sort of famously, it's um, one of Raymond Chandler's um, favourite books of all time. He read it multiple times, apparently, and told all his friends about it. And he didn't understand why it wasn't very sort of popular bestseller in its time, because everyone he knew yeah. really rated it as a crime novel. Um, I did want to read this bit from the, uh, from the newspaper, I think, when it came out. Um, I have read Mr. Bowling by his newspaper and paid, what's this, eight... Eight slash six. Eight and six. Eight and six for it. With the exception of Mrs. Agatha Christie and also Miss Anna Buchan. I will never again buy a book without first hearing it recommended by a friend. This is book this book is the last word in filth and should never <laughs> have been printed by you. This is to the to the publisher. Oh my god. Yeah. It's, I, Did it feel like filth? It felt very ahead of its time, very dark for its time. Mm. Um in like very filth. filth. Very skewed morality. Okay. In that it sort of doesn't uh, it's not like a crime mystery sort of thing. It's actually from the perspective of um, a, a murderer, a killer, in kind of blitz London. So if you're into that kind of setting, it's very much kind of the bedsits and uh, the pubs and the streets of London, uh, especially sort of nighttime London during the Second World War. 
Um, I really love uh, that kind of home front sort of setting. Um, and yeah, he um, is getting away with murder, basically. Sure yeah. Um, he's a very interesting protagonist. Uh, kind of unlike any other that I've read. There's kind of an element of really dark humour to this. And um, I just think this is such a brilliant book. I gave it five stars. Um, the writing was magnificent. Um, I would love to read some more Donald Henderson. Uh, Had you heard of him? No, nope. no. Nope. But he has. He did write quite a few after this. I think this was sort of, sort of quite notorious in its day. Mm. Um, so a good book to recommend there, I would say. Would recommend, mm. yeah. Um, if you're into sort of vintage uh, crime without sort of you know like sort of that this sort of detective murder mystery kind of element to it. Um, or if you like those kind of uh, seedy London kind of uh, authors. Um, I don't like either of those things, no. but I, you know. <laughs> but you're fine. But yeah, yeah, so someone's going to, aren't they? Yeah. The, um, the, the big uh, difference with this book um, to any others that I've read is that Mr. Bowling wants to be caught. Oh, okay. He wants to have like a sense of um, sort of punishment and, uh, you know, uh, retribution for what he's done, but he seems to just keep getting away with it. Um, against his will. So it's brilliant. Such a good book. My next one was Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. Um, put you put it here. Yeah. Which I started buddy reading with Jessica and Mercedes and for various reasons. It ended up just, uh, just being me. Yeah. <laughs> So I read, um, you know, Jessica and Mercedes, I probably wouldn't have picked this up without you guys and yeah. then you just left me in the lurch. Just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have picked it up. I felt like, you know when you think, I don't really fancy that book. And then it's Booker and then, you know, they said about Buddy reading it. And I was like, okay. And then sometimes you should just go with your uh, gut of not really fancying the book. Um, so I didn't really enjoy it. Um, I The writing style I didn't mind. I, I, I It was much more kind of, um, kind of, sort of contemporary... Um, voice to it than I thought yeah. it would be kind of in that sort of um, you know that slight cold detached way a bit like oh, yeah, I think it's like the Pisces kind of thing, type yeah. that type kind of feel to it mm -hmm. um, there it's about a, a woman and her mother who has who has been diagnosed with dementia and um, I also find um, I'm quite uncomfortable rightly or wrongly about people writing fiction about dementia because i i feel especially this felt a bit like dementia as a plot point a little bit to me and i find that quite uncomfortable and i found the way she wrote about dementia didn't sit well with me either so um that was a major part of it i've written one thing down here that she talks about the man like a quote um where she says, sometimes I think, it's, I think it's this flat. It's easy to go mad here. Other days it's unmistakable. Ma has lost it. And I just, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't like that. And we've talked about it. And I know, like, because you say you can write about anything. So. I just think sometimes the, you know, the characters in the book say the things that they might say in real life. But it might not be the, you know, the author's the, yeah. opinion or way that she would put it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah so I didn't like that mm. and so that's kind of yeah also there is a lot about and people have picked up on this i know like she talks a lot about um kind of like bodily functions and about smells um that didn't bother me like some people said it really put them off uh so it's about like vomit and like you know um snot and mm. sick mm. sick is the same as vomit um on sort of decay and it, but it does go like she talks but then also i found she just talks about smells too much so it became too much. Too obvious. Yeah, so yeah. there was this sentence. The little girl has blue eyes, a blue that makes me think of love, forests, and the smell of rotting flesh. Yeah. And it's like, what is that? I said, blue doesn't make you think of forests, does it? Well, maybe, but it doesn't make you think of rotting flesh. No, it's fancy writing. <laughs> like you, catch, you catch a lot of fancy writing these days, I think. It's just you need a good editor. Yeah, I like, because, you know, those things then stick out, stick out for me, because I'm like, what? What does that mean? Mm. Anyway, we will leave it on. There is one line 
that then I was just like, oh, hang on. And that line was, hmm. I am obsessed, because she's an artist, isn't it? And actually, I quite liked how she talked about art. I'm obsessed with Paul Feck at the moment. And Paul Feck is an artist I love. Got some shiny points. Yeah. yeah. So I love Paul Feck. Mm. And you would rarely see anything about Paul Feck yeah. anymore. But it's going to put some pictures up of Paul Feck work. I am. <laughs> so that was that. It was a two star. I didn't really get on with it. Yeah. Um, so have, no, you learnt, thank you. have you learnt your lesson to not bother reading any of the book of Not listen to Mercedes and Jessica. You yeah, mean? that too. Mm. Yeah. yeah, there's another Book of Price one coming up, which I didn't like either. What's next, Bertie? Well, I'm just going to quickly uh, say that I did read the forward uh, Book of yeah. Poetry 2021. Are you in that? I am in this, but are that's you... not what we're going to discuss today. Are you like a forward, um, re a highly commended poet? Is it you and Sharon Olds and Michael Rosen? Just wanted to mention a few poets in here that I, poems in here that I really enjoyed. Um, so... I did, um, off the back of this, buy uh, this collection, Platinum Blonde, by uh, Phoebe Stux. We both really enjoyed the Phoebe Stux poem in here, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, I thought that was a good one. Um, and that was um, Fox. Sharon Olds, obviously, I think Sharon Olds is like one of the greatest living poets, or greatest poets. She's before you in the book, isn't She's she? She's just literally just before yeah. Pastori comes yeah. on. <laughs> uh, um, Do you like this one? Like Sean really likes the Michael Rosen. Raspberry Pit. Raspberry Pit. Yeah. Um, what about um, this was my favourite. <laughs> the uh, Natalie Diaz. Oh, I, yeah, I enjoyed. I like them. Yeah. Um, and the Rachel Long uh, poetry was really good. Uh, I've been meaning to pick up her collection um, with some of the greats. Um, so and yeah, as Sean has mentioned in her previous video there. It's a really good foreword as well, which I think sort of acknowledges um, everything that's happened this year. The, for the forward was great, yeah. Yeah, um, and kind of how that sort of played into the collection and everything else. So yeah, enjoyed that. It was a good read. Yay. Thank you, Forward Price. Aww. Um, I then read The Practice is the Path by T.S. Little. Um, I really like T.S. Little. He's a yoga teacher and... Um, I think this is his third book, though I don't know if his first book is like hugely available. So it's lessons and reflections on the transformative power of yoga. I tagged loads of it because there's so much good stuff in it. I'll read you this little bit. It says, um, this is in the chapter Empty Before You Begin, which I think is a nice title. And it says, through meditation, yoga, chanting and prayer, we clean house. We sort through piles of personal history, troves of impressions, wants and needs. In the beginning, this proves difficult, with this hard to maneuver through aisles of clutter. In, clutter. in sorting through the paraphernalia of our mind stuff, we get lost somewhere in the timeline of our personal history, in the narrative we have become. When we get to the cushion and sit with a lifted spine, we must ask, out of all that I have accumulated, what really belongs? We identify with our mind memorabilia, but is it really me? When we look long and hard over many sessions, we begin to realise that all the stuff we have compiled in our minds and hearts over the years is surplus. We come to realise that what we really need is to pare down, discard and let go. So good. Very good. Very good. Five stars, guys. Have I talked too much? <laughs> you can talk as much as you want. Yeah. Okay. I read Animals, a.k.a. Um, a Daffodil on the Pavement by Laura Del Rivo, who was super cool, um, kind of uh, young British author of the sort of early 60s, late 50s. Um, she's best known for, for this and um, another one I've re uh, read by her, which is, I think, called The Forbidden Room. Um, this, I much prefer to that one. This was excellent. Um, it says on the back, novel of young life, young love, young London, as it really is. So it's another oldie set in London. Um, this is very much about youth, kind of, of that time. So it sort of even sort of talks about sort of some of the CND marches and sort of, you know, bohemians and artists and drinking in the caffs. Um, I really liked it. I really liked um, the central character whose name was Maggie. Um, and she uh, is feels a little bit kind of like not not quite cool enough, not quite hip enough, have not the right look, 
Um, she she hangs around in the cafes and uh, you know tries to lose her virginity and it's just kind of about her coming of age really um, and it sort of covers a few years of her life and a lot of the characters in her circle's life um, and yeah how they're sort of navigating that particular time in history for students and young people um, yeah I just thought it was a real really good snapshot of that era I can't get enough of that um, I think this was turned into maybe a film i haven't seen it but uh yeah yeah would recommend if you can find a copy she is currently uh still going she's writing kids books and uh books. she works on a market stall in london no way. yeah i'll put a picture of her she's, <gasps> she's really cool oh, yeah so amazing. yeah would like to read more about her i then read um intimation six essays by zadie smith so this is the one that's kind of um short essays written uh, during lockdown um i really enjoyed it and i really i liked how it was written i definitely need to read some more of her non-fiction um so it's very enjoyable to read didn't hasn't stayed with me um particularly but that's okay that as well yeah, yeah. I th it was good i'm glad Be interested in reading it maybe like years in yeah, the future when yeah. the, if, if there is a future oh my gosh yeah. it's a future vibe yeah. so yeah i enjoyed it yeah Four you stars. Can carry on with your next one. Okay. Case, a little one next one there. was the other book I won, which was Be Alive. Um, this one I bloody read with Kat from Biblia Obscura. Um, we've had similar uh, reactions to it. Um, this one, though, I, you know, I, I was really wanting to read this one because mm. I think, like a lot of people, I follow, follow Brandon Taylor on Twitter and he's just such an absolute delight. And he's so funny and mm. he's just wonderful. And um, I guess I was thinking maybe that feeling would be in the book, which it's not at all. It's hard to do Which that, is isn't fine, it? you, yeah. know, I'm, you yeah. know, that's obviously okay. You don't yeah. have to, it's because it's a novel. Yeah. It's a campus novel set over a weekend. Um, and it's like the main character is a black queer guy and his friends are really, I think all of them are white. Um, they're all awful. So there's that as mm. well. Um, I mean, I like the perspective, um, his his perspective as a queer black man. When is it set? Um, is it, it, doesn't, now, it doesn't sort of say. Right. I I think it is kind of set now. Mm, Nowish. Yeah, or or not that yeah. long ago. I'm yeah. just trying to think. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't think it tells us. Right. I feel a bit bad about this because I think Brandon Taylor is so lovely. I didn't hate it, and I think even worse than that, I found it quite dull. Um, I. I I was a bit bored by it, um, while acknowledging there was lots of interesting sort of discussions in there as well. At the beginning, I felt there was quite a lot of overwriting, which I think other people have picked up on. So there was a couple of um, sentences I picked out, which I have... some bits, yeah. Yeah, I have yeah. mentioned them in a Goodreads review, so apologies if this is repeating again. So one of them is where he's getting a mug out of a cupboard, and it says, the abandoned, mismatched mugs crouch in the back of the cupboard like children in foster care. And that just like doesn't work on so many levels, does it? Also, you don't your your mind doesn't think in that way, does it? No. Like you never, I've never looked at the mug cupboard and thought that those mugs look like children in foster you just care. Just getting a mug. Yeah, you might think, oh, they look a bit lonely. Yeah. Or, or something. The another one is her shoulder is covered in angular dark tattoos, deep black zigzags, not tribal, but a geometry of the self. Wallace thinks. Maybe Wallace thinks in a different way to mm. other human beings. I feel like it got... I didn't pick out stuff like that as it went along, so I felt yeah. like there was less of that. Right. And I... F I don't know. I don't know, guys. And what else have I written? It was... I put it's cold and depressing. I find that a lot with a lot of contemporary books. I think especially sort of with um, debut novels or, you know, like uh, younger authors tend to... It's, it's kind of like a bit of a, a go-to writing style, isn't mm. it? That sort of um, quite sort of short, minimal writing with a bit of cynicism. Yeah. And uh, it's just become like, it's become its own kind of genre of fiction now, isn't it? I th yeah. It's hard to like, to be uh, sincere and warm <laughs> when writing, I think, mm. isn't it? Like to, to put that in and not feel like you're being sentimental or, mm. you know, um, cliched or... It's quite much easier to yeah. appear to be cynical. Yeah. I know that lots of people have given it, like, five stars, so it's really gelled with a lot of people as well. 
Um, and I think it's that thing of if you go in and you like the voice, mm. then you're there. Mm -hmm. But because I didn't connect with that voice or I didn't like the voice, mm -hmm. then I just wasn't at all. But I can sort of, for this one, I can kind of see why people mm. like it. Whereas mm -hmm. the burnt sugar one, I'm like, I don't really know why we're liking this one. But this one, I think, yeah, if you really kind of that, if you feel that connection to the voice of it, yeah. then I think that will yeah. just carry you through perfectly delightfully. But it just... It wasn't for me in the end, which is sad times all around, really, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. 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 Do we still another one? I've only got one more. Oh, so right. Do you want to do one, then I do one then? Okay, because then I read Pizza yeah. Girl, and I really like Pizza Girl. Yes. Yeah. I was just, I had ordered it from the library, and it hadn't come in. And then we were out shopping, and Bert found it, and I was like, oh, yeah, I think I'm just going to really yeah, like I it. Really, we've been wanting to read this, haven't we? I really liked yeah, it. So especially like this bit. Yeah, so I'll tell you what that bit is. It was a bit dusty. Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Fraser. Um, who I think is like Korean, American. Mm -hmm. um, it's about an 18 year old girl who is pregnant and works as a pizza delivery girl. She starts delivering to this older woman and this kind of this relationship starts. Um, it reminded me a bit of like a kind of Mary Gates girl. Which is high praise a indeed. Bit of Veronica, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Had that, I think so. High praise indeed from uh, Sean Harper's story. It is. Oh, this bit. Yeah, I love this bit. Mm. Um, Billy hugged Mom and said something that I couldn't hear. I was running past them to the bathroom. I had a second to appreciate that someone had just cleaned the toilet. The water was blue. Toilet water blue might have been my favourite colour. The next second I was throwing up. You, yeah, that's one of your favourite colours, maybe, as I well. I don't know. Right? I just like that. Did that, that blue remind you of a forest? No, maybe? see? No. It's so much better. And also, it's just like I was really there, because I could really see that toilet blue. Yes, I know yeah. I loved it. That's what writing is, isn't it? It's supposed to put you there. Yeah, because it's like, yeah. it made me think, oh, I haven't seen that toilet water blue for a long yeah, time. Yeah, and also you might not have even registered it. And then <laughs> yes. like, when someone tells you about it, it's like, yeah, that is a particular yeah. blue, isn't it? I remember, you know that book, that swimming book? Um, what was the writer? Not, not Sheila. See. No, the one. Oh, Leanne Chapton. Leanne Chapton. She writes one about that book about swimming, mm -hmm. and she talks about the smell under your swatch watch. Mm. And I was like, oh gosh, I haven't thought about that for years. It's a joy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my final read of the month was um, if you can see that freezing down by this is by Anders Anders Bodelson, um, translated from the. Danish by Joan Tate. This is from 1969. I accidentally ordered a copy online without a jacket. That's fine. Actually, the the blue is like the blue of bit like toilet, toilet water. Bit, not quite. Um, <laughs> but it's got freezing down, more, so I, I guess that's... I think that's more the blue of rotten flesh. Oh, right. right. Mm. We're not sure. We're not sure. But this is... Uh, a kind of a yeah, speculative sci-fi about a, um, a guy who's kind of like an editor or an ideas person for magazine stories. So he kind of is in touch with authors and gives them ideas or you know edits their short stories to go in his magazine. Um, he is um, given a uh, short time to live uh, because he's discovered that he has cancer. It's like terminally ill. And so this is written in 1969. The beginning sort of present day-ish bit is 1973. So um, the character is given an option of having like a year to live or participating in this experiment of being frozen down um, because they feel that his particular um, cancer will have like a treatment, um, a cure within the next sort of 15 to 20 years. And there's this new procedure where you can, you can freeze people down. He's kind of like the ideal specimen for it. And you get reawoken when your uh, illness is treatable. Um, so, yeah, I really like the premise. Um, it sort of brings up loads of different sort of questions. And I just felt that this book was absolutely brilliant, way ahead of its time. And I don't want to sort of give you too much more about what happens once he sort of is frozen down. Um, but it just had a really, a really, really good voice. It did not feel at all translated, which a lot of I find a lot of translated books, especially older ones, tend to you can sort of sense that there's something, tra you know, that there's something different about the way that they're written. They feel translated. This just felt like brilliantly written. Um, 
So a really good job, I think, by Joan, Joan Tate. And um, there's kind of like a love story going through there as well. Um, there's little references to him, like he keeps sort of remembering this sort of line from a song, which is like from his kind of past life, which is from Hey Jude. I think he sort of keeps remembering, thinking about you were born to, you were made to go and get her from Hey Jude. Um, and that sort of keeps cropping up and then like, yeah, it's just got really nice little touches. Really, really liked it. Was a good it. reading month. It was, yeah. It's, it's quite um, a, quite a dark book, quite sort of bleak um, vision of the future. Um, so he gets reawoken in the mid '90s, which I quite enjoyed. Um, it wasn't like the '90s that I recall. <laughs> just say that. I wonder if he's um, quite well known in Denmark, Possibly. or if maybe some of our Scandi mm. friends can let us know if there's yeah, and there's Bodelson. Um, mm. I couldn't see anything in print um, at all. Um, although I think a few of his books are kind of quite, you know, renowned in within the genre. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, such a good find. Yay! My last one, which is from the library, so apologise for shiny. Shiny is the Return by Rachel Harrison. Mm. Um, which again I read in like two days super addictive I've mm. seen it described as Sex and the City meets The Shining which I can't think of a better premise <laughs> could you? Why well, didn't someone else think of that first didn't it? I yeah, know yeah. so it's like four friends mm. um, the, the beginning is that one of their friends has gone missing and she goes missing for like two years they think she's dead and then she comes back but she's not the same I love it when people come back a little bit <laughs> Yeah, a little changed, bit off. Isn't it? Yeah. I, I like her ones where she's yeah. like suddenly eating steak, whereas like before she went missing, she was vegetarian. It's quite noticeable, that, isn't it? Really? <laughs> yeah, they're all just It's like, not like subtle. <laughs> um, so I really enjoyed it. Mm. I gave it four stars. I thought it was like, I thought it was really well well written. Mm. I really liked it. You know, there was lots about um, the, the kind of horror element is quite sort of um, almost like backgroundy. Mm. So there's obviously the you know the friend has gone missing and there's something weird that's happened. Yeah. But it's a lot just about their relationships and um, they're staying in this kind of weird hotel as well, which felt this to me the shining like, part. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. felt to me like it because they they're sort of celebrating the friend coming back. So they've all gone away together for right. the weekend and it's like really weird there. Maybe they could make a film of it using the car the original cast of Sex and the City. Do you think? They're a bit old, maybe. So oh, is but, it? Uh, oh, yeah. Are they? Yeah. Because they're all like women in their twenties, and right, okay. yeah. Okay. But so I really enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well done, library, isn't it? I know. Yeah. I saw this one on Jordaline's channel. All oh, right. And I think she liked it. Um, yeah. So much fun. Also, it's a good Halloween recommend. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, I think so because it's um, also in that sense of not super scary. Well, a little bit. It's a bit more creepy mm. and kind of quite subtle, so mm. you can just enjoy the. Yeah thrillery yeah. aspect of it. That's the writer really looks quite cool as well. Love a good author photo. Yeah, yeah, so that yeah. was like total oh, fun, guys. Nice one. Okay then. Done. Done. Now we can go back to being scary. Yeah, for yeah, scary time. For scary time. Yeah. 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 I stopped raining. Oh my gosh, does that mean we have to go for a walk? We don't, we don't have to do a walk on Sunday. I've done my walk. I didn't because it was raining so I went in the car. Yeah. I taught yoga this morning. I'm yeah. still wearing my yoga outfit. <laughs> Signing out. <laughs> um, do you like our new backdrop with plants casually propped around us? We've got a Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, work, it's working. Yeah. 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 I always trust Mercedes. Oh, she's very wise. She is, isn't yeah. she? Yeah, yeah, yeah.